Fiji is one of Australia's favourite tourist destinations. Known for its beautiful islands, strong culture and friendly people. But something sinister is starting to happen in Fiji. The island nation is being threatened by some of the world's most powerful criminal networks. To find out why, we've travelled to remote Mawala Island, 100 kilometres east of Fiji's capital, Suva. Because in May last year, the village minister, Chitoko, found something quite extraordinary washed up on the beach behind me. Toko, why were you here that day? I am here for catch some crap. Ah. On a late afternoon last year, local minister Chitoko was fishing near the village of Nasoki. I come across on this way, and uh, I need to rest. And she come here and I see uh, one uh, package. Mm -hmm. And I, what did it look like? It's uh, like this. Already my son can do it. Tambo took it and buffalo. A plastic tag to have a cow, Kurita can be a dindy. Manu Torum bit and a woman in Ocato. No one knows some bit of Menuka to tell you to land on and not really. The new kill and you shown the class of what you might see a travel to Lomo. Chitoko took the mysterious package and hid it in his house. Autobolemo put a valen and Roman in Rumu, or send me what it out and go and do, or what it can have one or two. Make her on the lava, make her reda. Four days later, police came to retrieve the package. They discovered that it was one kilogram of high-grade cocaine. When Chitoko eventually told the village, he discovered that it wasn't the only package to have recently washed up on these beaches. Hi. Evan. Hi, Ty. Hi. Evan. Bula, bula, bula. I believe you got some videos to show us? Yes. Okay, yeah. well, great. Let's go and have a look. Ties is a cameraman now living in the Soki village on Mawala Island. A few months earlier, he filmed a young boy who found a packet with an identical label, the bull. So that's the actual, that's the, the kilo right. of cocaine right yeah. there. That's the with the same symbols. Yeah. And the, this is the boy. He was the one who found the packet. The kids, they thought, oh, it's a packet of milk. Wow. And they tried uh, opening it. Mm. So mm. One of the girls uh, saw them and saw the packet and said, hey, Stop uh, doing that. We need to take it back to the village and show it to the elders. Mm. Mm. Fijian Customs later told us that around 100 of these one kilogram cocaine bricks had washed up on remote beaches throughout this part of Fiji. All had the same picture of a bull. Officers believe this cocaine came from Mexico. Why is it washing up on the beach here in this near this island? Other big countries that are um, drug trading and trafficking use Fiji as a transit country. It's all over the place. Government can stop these guys. In recent years, Fiji has found itself entering a dark place. Foreign syndicates are using the country to move vast quantities of cocaine and the methamphetamine ice to Australia and New Zealand. The drugs come from Mexico, South America and Southeast Asia and business is booming. I've come to tourist hotspot Nandi to discover more about the illicit trade. There's really been no, no strategy for the overflow of drugs towards the Pacific itself. Mm -hmm. uh, Jose Souza Santos is a former officer in the Australian Defence Force. He now advises governments about security and geopolitical risk in the Pacific region. Why is cocaine being shipped through the Pacific to Australia? I mean, it seems like a long way to try and make any sort of money on that. 
Australia, New Zealand are considered the cash cows of the region. In Colombia, one kilo of cocaine is roughly $7,000 USD. By the time it reaches Australian shores, it's around $250,000 USD. For a kilo? For a kilo, exactly. Extraordinary. Australia and New Zealand pay some of the highest prices uh, for cocaine in the world. How do they get the coke through the islands? Uh, there are many different ways, but what we have seen through some of the, the recent seizures uh, is through uh, the maritime craft, you know, the, the yachts. Boats coming from Mexico or from South America transfer their drugs to Australian or New Zealand pleasure craft. Uh, these boats would then not be checked as they come into Australia wow. and uh, New Zealand these days. So these are cocaine cartels organising shipments of yachts and then getting it into Australia that way? Yes, definitely. In 2017, Australia's biggest ever cocaine bust was achieved by intercepting just one of these vessels. 1.4 tonnes of cocaine was seized on a yacht off the New South Wales south coast. According to the Australian Federal Police, in the past three years alone, 13.2 tonnes of cocaine have been seized from small boats transiting the Pacific. That's more than 20 times the amount shown here and worth more than 3 billion Australian dollars. Most of these vessels, they come from uh, New Zealand, from Australia. I mean, at uh, one time, they can be about five, ten in a day. Five, ten a day? Yeah. New arrivals? New arrivals, depend, eh? Yeah. At one of Nandy's popular marinas, we met Winston Rounds, chief of Fiji's customs force. It's like looking for the needle in the haystack of legitimacy. It's his job to try and stop the traffic of narcotics through Fiji. It's a big job. We are 194,000 square kilometers in the Pacific Ocean, and only 10% of that is land. Can anybody realistically patrol that whole area? <laughs> Man, you know, I can only put it like, I mean, like when you go fishing, you don't expect to catch all the fish in the ocean, you know, I mean, <laughs> and that's how we, I mean, we try our best. In the past two years, Fijian customs have needed to step up their anti-drug efforts, not just in the ocean, but at every port of entry. Since getting sniffer dogs from New Zealand police in 2016, they've made more than 20 times the number of seizures. Australia is also helping, supporting a number of intelligence and law enforcement initiatives. Has the scale of the hard drug trade through Fiji caught everybody by surprise, Australia and Fiji? Definitely, it has. Within a short period of time, we've seen the increase just shoot up, you know, and that's a frightening thing for every Fiji. But even more disturbing, are the side effects on Fiji of Australia's appetite for cocaine. Whilst that is happening, Fiji is also becoming the market as well. I mean, they are opportunists, you know, you know they're criminals within Fiji as well. Local markets are being created by the trade shipping of hard drugs to Australia. There's a market now in Fiji for men, and there are people who are taking men. It's, it's frightening, I mean... Meth is a different ball game on type of drugs. And as a law enforcement officer, I don't want to see these kind of drugs in, in our society. Uh, the scourge it brings to our way of life, to our children and, our, and to the future of this country and our way of life. Cheaper and far more addictive than cocaine, the methamphetamine ice is taking hold of Fiji. Throughout 2009, Fijian police made only two arrests involving ICE. Now, they respond to five ICE-related incidents per day. When it's available, we'll get it. To find out who's pushing this drug, we've managed to find a dealer. He's willing to talk to us as long as we hide his identity. Can you show me? Okay, so what is this? ICE. Referring? How much do you sell that for? 50 or 100 bucks, depending who you're selling it to. If you're selling it to a in the streets, probably go for less. If you're selling it to a higher market, probably go for 100 bucks. How, how widespread, how common do you think uh, ice is now? Uh, 
how you can uh, get ice as easy as getting me out in the streets. Wow. And in all towns. When did it become so available? About two years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. What type of people are they that are, that are buying this drug? All sorts of stuff. People that get uh, hooked onto it. Mostly people out in the streets, like street workers, late at night. Some taxi drivers use it. Party people, kids and stuff like that, yeah. Do you ever have a concern yourself about selling this drug to people who then become addicted? Do you ever have a, a moral issue yourself? Yes, sometimes. But then uh, if I don't do it, probably the next person is going to do it, so... <laughs> hmm. Everybody's got to work for that money. Trying to get the money to it. The once idyllic Fiji wasn't prepared for the flood of ice. Drug awareness isn't widespread, and Fiji is yet to open its first rehabilitation centre. While the Australian government supports Fijian law enforcement, it hasn't funded any drug harm reduction programs here in the past 12 months. Oh, that's Monica Lewinsky. That's Monica Lewinsky. On one of Suva's main roads, an infamous prostitution beat, we start to see the human toll. You were addicted to it. Okay, so you used it every day. Okay. Yeah. How much was it costing you every day? More than a hundred a day. Yeah. And how were you making that money? Yes. Sex work. Yeah. yeah. Fiji's growing industry of sex workers use ice at alarming rates. But one woman is fighting back. How old are you? 19. You are gorgeous. Yes, you are. You're very pretty. Kalisi Volatabu is leading a one-woman crusade to educate Fijians on the dangers of ice. We're sorry to intrude or anything, just uh, giving our booklet, the drug booklet, yeah. Her work is independent and self-funded, but this former prison drug counsellor is undeterred. What are you finding about the, the extent of use of ice on the street here? It's a lot more than what I thought it was going to be. Like, they're playing with a loaded gun and they don't understand what they're doing. Which village are you from? Hi, the can't drop me. Khaleesi does understand. At 13, she was sent from Fiji to school in Australia. Just months later, she found herself homeless on the streets of Sydney and addicted to ice. I used to take it myself, so I know what it's like to be under the influence and everything else. Thank you. So. Now, she's committed to helping vulnerable Fijians avoid the same dark fate. Is there anybody else on the street here yeah. educating no. the sex workers? No. No, I can tell you that hands down. There is no one in this country that actually goes and gives us factual information about the drugs. All right, girls. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you're a father yourself. Mm -hmm. You get to see this. What are the thoughts that's going through your mind? That's absolutely horrible. Yeah. The next day, Khaleesi arranges for us to meet Elaine, a sex worker and former ice addict who Khaleesi helped get clean. I was on it for about 11 months. Ice can control a person if I had it and you were an addict. You would bow to me like I was a god. That's how much the addiction can hold a person. Hi. Hi. Elaine? To show us how much ice is changing Fiji. Thanks for coming up. Yeah. Today. Elaine's agreed to take us to a side of Suva that tourists don't usually get to see. Why do working girls use ice? It keeps us awake. And are they are they smoking it or injecting it? Injecting it. Injecting. Because nowadays the pushers sell the needles, eh? They sell it ready. The meth is in the needle, they just have to mix the dose with water and shoot it up. Elaine tells me that one of these preloaded needles 
costs about 15 Australian dollars. They only inject because you cannot smoke to puff it and everything to puff. You gotta be in a closed room so that the air doesn't blow away because it takes time to melt the the crystals. Yeah? Another way to melt these crystals is what sex workers call on the rocks. On the rocks, that's dry. You use your blood, you pull out, you inject yourself, and then you use your blood to melt and mix the meth, and then you shoot it back into you, yourself. You have to do it maybe once or twice so that all the meth is gone directly into your bloodstream. So I've just noticed there's a school just here. Yeah, right. that's a, that school I also went to. Okay. <laughs> Elaine takes us to a nearby alley. By day, it's a shortcut for children to get to school. By night, it's a hiding place for sex workers to inject ice. At night, it's the, the witch's domain where we do all the poisoning, all from the night, so this left is, here for kids to see in the day. So they come down here, then they're working the street, are they? Yeah, that street there, that same street is where sex workers work. Here, there's one bag. That's a bag. That's a bag. This mm -hmm. is one of the bags. This is what you call, you can get in here. See, that's used already. Mm -hmm. It's used, um, that's either a hundred bag or a fifty bag. And that had ice in it. That had ice in it. It's torn off. Yeah, so we might be lucky to find needles around here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Next, she wants to show me Suva's busiest daytime prostitution beat. The location is startling. This is the post office. The, post the Fiji office. post office, yeah. So this is right in the middle of Suva? In the middle of Suva. Okay. Yeah. The last spot that we went to, that's the night hot spot. Yeah? So from there, if they don't make enough money from there, they come here in the day. and So they'll shoot themselves to come in front to go through the whole day. At the post office, we meet a sex worker calling herself V. She has alarming revelations about the effects of ice on the city. So I was not like this. Really? Just because of drugs, that's not changed me. How has it changed? It's changed by the robbery. They do the violence in town when they don't have the money. Robbery and mm -hmm. violence? Mm -hmm. I've seen plenty of small girls because of drugs, they're on the street. Because of drugs, they're on the street? Mm -hmm. And what age? 16 years, 17 years. No. Mm -hmm. So young girls now, 16, mm -hmm. 17, 16, they, they're turning to sex work yeah. because of ice. Mm -hmm. And that's new? That's new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to hear, but everyone who's experienced ice tells us the same thing. Meth makes your spirit nothing. It breaks you from your soul. It's just like the devil is holding your hand and he's taking you right to hell. This isn't the Fiji that most Australians know. And it can't be the image that Fiji wants for itself. Those trying to stop the drug trade and the ice epidemic in Fiji face overwhelming odds. This is Superintendent Anari Masitambua, the director of Fiji's Anti-Drugs Task Force. It is actually ready to be arrested. He's waged a 30-year war against the trafficking of marijuana, cocaine and now ice through his country. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. He's agreed to speak to us while on an anti-drug operation on a remote Fijian island. How much has the drug problem grown uh, that you're facing in Fiji in recent years? Okay, for Fiji from uh, 2009, there was only 148 cases. These including the, uh, the arrest uh, on cocaine and heroin. But for 2018, it has uh, tremendously rose to 1,440. Wow. And uh, we have seen that uh, there is an increase in methamphetamine cases from uh, two in uh, 2009 to 113 cases, last year totaling uh, $40 million.
obviously there's a lot of money in this. I mean, we're told that a kilogram of cocaine, when it reaches Australia, is worth $250,000 Australian. We're talking multi-million dollars, I mean, billions perhaps of dollars that are at stake here. Is there any evidence that that money is perhaps causing any corruption or uh, weakening of state institutions, police or government, in any Pacific Islands? Is that a concern? We're just having rumours in regards to that and uh, we are actually working tightly with our Police Intelligence Bureau to prevent the police force, the government, from being uh, infiltrated by uh, these drug dealers and also the money that is used. So you are worried about possible infiltration? Yes, that is a big worry because I've been to many countries overseas and I've seen uh, how this money has infiltrated into uh, the drug enforcement and also the, uh, the police force overseas. In neighbouring Tonga, since 2016, police and members of parliament have faced firearms, money laundering, passport fraud and bribery charges. Just last year, several high-ranking customs officials were arrested on drug-related offences. Don't think you're too high for the police to reach. You deal, you pay. While Fijian law enforcement is actively taking steps to prevent corruption, the risk still remains for many Pacific nations. In the worst case scenario, we look at the Pacific becoming a semi narco region. The more that these syndicates are able to exert their influence, that is not just a real threat to the Pacific, but it's also a real threat for Australia and New Zealand. What's the response or the attitudes do you get from the Australian government and police when you raise the alarm about what's happening out here? There is, a, I think, a, a, an attitude that uh, enough is being done, uh, that they're in control of the situation. The reality is that they haven't had an impact on the overflow of drugs into the Pacific, on the creation of drug markets in the Pacific itself. Let's just remember that the Pacific would never be facing this risk if Australia and New Zealand's drug markets weren't driving the, the, the drug syndicates um, to move these drugs through the region. But it's not just the syndicates. According to the dealer, Australian tourists are now coming to Fiji to buy and return home with drugs like cocaine. Oh yes, I've met one that's wanted to buy key and bring it back to Australia. Hmm. How'd they get it back? Come down. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I worry about my side, I don't worry about his side. Did he make it? Oh yes, he came from a second man. Oh, he did the second? <laughs> Is he working for somebody or are you doing it himself? I uh, just, I don't ask a lot of questions. That's where I spent the rest of my childhood. Oh, the little one, the yellow one? The yellow one. Ah, really? Yeah. So this is your hood? This is my hood. Uh -huh. Today, Khaleesi Volatabu is bringing her anti-drug message home. Everything's gone back full circle. Yeah. She's returning to her childhood village for the first time in 30 years. <laughs> How long is it since you've seen each other? She was only small, really? For Khaleesi, it's a difficult homecoming. She's worried her message may not get through. How easy is it for the community to be talking about drugs? Oh, no, quite difficult. We tend to just not talk about it. It's, we don't speak about these things. Right, so is it, would you call it a taboo subject? Very much a taboo subject. Okay, so even if somebody's in trouble with drugs or their children's in trouble? Yeah. The suffering silence. Khaleesi believes that it's this culture that's helped drugs like ice to spread through society. With a national anti-drugs campaign still to be funded, it's up to Khaleesi to break the silence. Drugs. Mm. Mm. Okay, don't be shy. Mm. That's it. Mm. 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 Mm.
If you look across Fiji to the community, to the villages, to the churches, these are family in crisis and they are reaching out for help. Depends what drugs it is that you're taking, eh? They don't have the drug awareness, but we've started the work of actually getting this information out there and getting family to talk openly about it, eh? Now you've got the booklet, so all right, you want to do us a favor? You want to take it home and share it? It's like we know it's we can't fix it all. But when you empower and inspire people to do it on their own, they gotta do it. Is drugs good for you? No, no. it's bad. It's bad, that's right. When you don't have the consumer that wants this, when you educate them, it you know eradicates the problem. It's like we believe that we wanna help somebody else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tonight, in one of Fiji's thousands of villages, Khaleesi appears to have gotten through. Look at this video. Is that good information? Yes. Not a long term effect of the Okay. Coming here after 35 years, I am so blessed. This work, it's got people talking about this. We've never done that in Fiji. Fiji used to claim that it was the way the world should be. But the sins of bigger nations have seen that paradise threatened. Fiji needs to win the drug war, but it's clear that it cannot do that alone. The Pacific needs assistance in addressing not just the movement of drugs through the region, but also to address the issue of harm created by these drugs. Especially when the, the issue and uh, has been created by Australia's drug markets. Right now in Fiji, we are suffering and we need the help. But throwing money to law enforcement certainly is not going to solve this problem on its own. Eh? We need to look at counselling, we need to look at family support, education, the resources that needs to be injected. Because if these drugs is still allowed to be just, you know, infiltrate our villages, our community and everything else, there ain't gonna be any Fiji.